Hi guys, it is I, Mr. Bertosh, your extremely handsome science teacher. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the layers of the earth. Throughout your entire life, you have pretty much been confined to just a few of the layers of the earth, and that is mainly the crust, the atmosphere, and the hydrosphere, but there are more layers, and anyway, what the heckens is a hydrosphere, you probably know what the crust is, that's the, that's the most delicious part of the pizza, uh, but what is, oh wait, I mean, we're talking about the earth. That is the part of the earth that we stand on. And you probably know what the atmosphere is, but you may not know what the hydrosphere is. Hydro, what does hydro mean? Hydro, like hydration, it means water, right? So the watery layer of the earth with the lakes and the streams and the oceans, okay? But there's more layers than just these uh, layers. For example, there's a core, and even that is broken up. There's an inner core and an outer core. And there's a mantle, and you've probably never been in these layers, I would assume, because so far as I'm aware, no human has ever been in any of those layers. The furthest we've ever gotten down is the crust. Well, let's talk about the layers of the earth and their names and their characteristics, their características, porque cuando tengo la oportunidad de hablar español, siempre quiero hacerlo. Uh, I mean, what? Uh, we're going to talk about the characteristics of the layers of the each layer of the earth. And why? Why are the layers of the earth in the order that they are? Hooray! So let's talk first of all, first of all, about each layer starting at the bottom. And uh, that is the middle because the bottom would be, this is a planet. And the bottom of gravity on a planet is in the middle. So we're going to start in the middle. And that would be this layer called the inner core. So way down deep in the very bottomesty of the earth, the most bottomliest part of the earth, there is this layer called the inner core. And the inner core is solid. If you're taking notes, that would be a good thing to write down. Write down. The inner, the inner core is solid. It is made out of... Uh, nickel and iron, okay, more iron than nickel, but both of those, iron and nickel, and it is uh, really, really, really hot. It is the hottest layer, and it is the most dense layer of the earth. And then as I go up or out, because again, it's round, uh, but from the perspective of gravity, if I go up a little bit, I get to the next layer, which is called the outer core. Well, wait a minute. Why do I have to have two cores? Why can't I just say the core? Why do I need to have an inner core and then an outer core? Is it just because scientists want to make you memorize one more thing? They're all sitting around in their secret sciency room saying, laughing to themselves maniacally, saying, let's make those kids memorize an extra thing for no reason. Or... Is it because there is a difference between the inner core and the outer core? Well, it turns out it's because there's a difference between the two. Okay, so the out that remember I said the inner core is solid. The outer core is liquid. The outer core is uh, in most regards the same as the inner core, except that instead of solid, it's liquid. Well, why? Why is it liquid? And it's also not quite as hot as the inner core. It's still really, really hot but not quite as hot. What, and it's also made up of iron and nickel. Okay, but what is making it be liquid when the inner core is solid? Okay, and this is kind of a complicated answer, but really it comes down to pressure. So the inner core has a lot more pressure on it. All the layers of the earth above it are squishing it down 
And that pressure is simply so great when I get to the inner core that the molecules can no longer move past each other. That's really the only reason why it is solid is because all the molecules are being held in place. They can't slide past each other because of the tremendous amount of pressure. But when I get out a little bit from the inner core out into the outer core, then the pressure is not quite so great because there's less stuff above it squishing it down. And so even though it's cooler, it is the molecules are still able to move and slosh and slide. And so it is actually a fluid, which is a sciencey word. That means it can move, things can move around. It's liquid. Okay. As I go out from the outer core, eventually I get to a layer that is a little bit cooler even still, because the further I go out, the more and more and more the Earth cools down, right? Because I'm getting closer to outer space, and outer space is really cold, and it's cooling it down. The Earth is slowly cooling down from the outside in, and it still has billions and billions and billions and billions of years until it fully cools down. But as time goes on, it's cooler and cooler and cooler the further out I go from the middle, from the core. So the next layer above the, so we've done inner core, solid, uh, made of nickel and iron. We've done outer core, which is liquid, also nickel and iron, and a little bit cooler, but still really hot. And now we're out to the mantle. And the mantle is cooler still, also a lot of nickel and iron, but now we're starting to get some other things in it as well slight amounts of silicates, just a rock basically. Okay, but it's still a lot of nickel and iron. Uh, it's a little bit less dense than the uh, outer core, which is a little bit less dense than the inner core. The mantle, because it's cooled down now, it is no longer liquid. It is marshmallow squishy. Uh, it is like peanut butter. It is, you, you could take your hand and you could push it through and then you would pull your hand out and it would be melted and gone because it's so hot, but you will have still nevertheless proven that it has a consistency of like marshmallow, okay, or peanut butter. So it's not really like it's uh, moving around like a liquid, but it can move uh, a little bit and does move a little bit like uh, peanut butter and, you know, marshmallows. It is, in fact, marshmallow mixed squishy, okay? And it is the biggest layer. It's where most of the mass is of the Earth right now. And then I go out further still, and what do I get to? I get to this layer called the crust, the most delicious part of the pizza, especially if it's stuffed crust. But in fact, there is nowhere on earth where the crust is filled with delicious mozzarella cheese. That would be a great planet to live on. But that is not the planet we live on. Our crust is not stuffed. It is just rock. Uh, and it is a very thin layer relative to the rest of the earth. However, it's still so thick that we've never been able to dig anything deep enough to get through it. I mean, literally, we have never, neverly ever, never have I ever, and never has anyone else ever dug through the crust. The crust is this thin eggshell-like layer of rock that is what everything lives on. Thin eggshell compared to the earth, but so very, very thick compared to humans that we can't dig our way through it. Uh, and the crust is where all life is. Incidentally, the crust is broken. Poor crust, it's broken. It's broken into pieces. And the pieces of the crust, we call them tectonic plates. And I do, in fact, have a video on tectonic plates, which you can watch and learn about. Uh, the tectonic plates are floating around on the mantle, bumping into each other, creating all kinds of cool things like earthquakes and stuff. As I go above the, uh, the crust, there are two more layers. The first one, the next one is the hydrosphere. Remember, we talked a minute ago, hydrosphere is made out of water, so that's oceans and stuff. 
Hydrosphere does not cover the entire Earth only because there isn't enough water. If there were enough water, it would cover the entire Earth and it would be above the crest. But there isn't enough water, so it just partially covers the Earth. And then the last layer is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the highest up layer because it is the least dense. And that is something very important to recognize. If I, as I go from the bottom to the top, or because it's a planet, the middle outward, I start at the most dense layer is the bottom layer. And then as I work my way out, every layer is just a little bit less dense until I get to the atmosphere which is the least dense, and that is because things sort themselves out naturally by density. If I take two substances and put them together, like oil and water, the least dense substance is going to rise to the top, and the most dense substance is going to sink to the bottom. The earth is no different. So the most dense things like iron and nickel and gold and all those heavier things, they all sink to the bottom, to the core. And the less dense things like silicates, which is a fancy sciencey word that means rock, uh, float up. And water, uh, which is less dense than rock, floats up higher. And that gases like oxygen and hydrogen and mostly nitrogen, they have all floated to the very top. The tippity top, well, the tippity tippity top would be hydrogen and helium. And they float to the very tippity top and often escape into space because they're so... Uh, I, I want to say light, but it's actually uh, undenseliness. They're undensified. They're undensulated. That is the official sciencey term. Undensulated is not a word. But uh, yeah. So those are the layers of the Earth. Uh, so you have the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, the crust the hydrosphere and the atmosphere, you need to know the characteristics of each. Uh, which ones are solid? Which layers are solid? That's an actual question. I want you to think about it. So the inner core is solid, and there's one more, the crust. Okay, which ones are liquid? The outer core is liquid, and the hydrosphere is liquid. Okay, well, wait a minute. What about which one is marshmallow mixed squishy like peanut butter? That would be the mantle. And which one is gassy like um, young boys tend to be and dads? That would be the atmosphere. The atmosphere is gassy. Poor atmosphere. And uh, that is all of the layers of the earth. There was something else I was going to talk about, but it has left my mind. Maybe there was something else I was going to talk about. Was I going to talk about something else? Oh, yes, I was. Um, how do we know? How, pray tell, do we know that such things that I am claiming are, in fact, true? I mean, I just said a minute ago that you cannot get to the... Uh, you, no human being has ever gotten through the crust. And so nobody's ever been in the mantle and no one's ever been to the outer core and definitely no one's ever been to the inner core. I, I saw a movie I, where somebody went there, but I'm pretty sure that was not real and it wasn't. Spoiler alert. So how do we know that such things as these are factual? Well, because it's important to support when you are doing science, you need to support your conclusions with evidence. You can't just make stuff up in science. You have to have evidence. You have to have facts. You have to have data. You have to be able to say the inner core is this and the outer core is that and the mantle is this. And because I have evidence, here is my evidence. Well, if we've never dug down, how do we have any evidence that these are, in fact, truthfully things that I am statifying? Uh, the answer is that we have a way of cheating. So have you ever been to the doctor? Uh, maybe you broke a bone or something. What do they do to you when you break a bone? They, how do they know your bone is broken without actually cutting your arm open and looking at it? Like if you break your arm and the doctor is like, well, I think your arm might be broken, but we better cut your arm open and look in it to see. That would be a horrifying way to identify if your bones are broken. So they don't do that because doctors are nice. So what do they do? They x-ray you. They put you on an x-ray machine and they're like, 
I can look inside your body and I can see your bones without even breaking your arm open. And we do the same thing with the earth in a sense, except we don't use a giant x-ray machine because the earth provides its own giant x-ray machine all the time. Remember I talked about how there are tectonic plates and they're moving around and bumping into each other. And when they bump into each other, they create earthquakes. Well, these earthquakes send waves through the earth all the way to the other side. And we can stick machines, seismographs around the earth, and we can measure, which is the correct way of pronouncing measure. We can measure the uh, waves as they arrive on the other side of the earth. And we can use the measurements to determine, kind of like an x-ray, what we can get a picture of what the inside of the earth looks like. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail in this video on how earthquake waves work. You can, for that, you can watch my earthquake video. But the earth, the waves go through the earth and they, different things happen to them when they hit liquid, depending on the, uh, the state of matter, like liquid, solid, and gas, or uh, whatever. Different things happen to the waves as they go through the earth. And so we can measure the waves when they get to the other side and we can be like, well, looky there. That is what the inside of the earth looks like. So it creates kind of an x-ray. Earthquakes create sort of an x-ray that we can use to examine the layers of the earth. And that provides us with the evidence that proves definitively what the inside of the earth looks like. Hooray. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science student. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted. And those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.